Putin reinstates the draft. U.S. Fed goes big with latest rate hike. U.S. and Canadian warships sail through Taiwan Strait. Germany says Putin must recognize he cannot win Ukraine war. Flemish bishops allow blessing same-sex unions. YouTube to give creators 45% of ad sales. U.S. wants all new vehicles to check drivers for alcohol use. 86% of trial firms wanting to keep four-day work week. Hello, I'm Johnny Wu. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It's Thursday, September 22nd, and here are your top stories. The media reported that the price one-way flights out of Russia skyrocketed on Wednesday after President Vladimir Putin ordered the immediate call-up of 300,000 reservists. According to Avia Sales data, direct flights from Moscow to Istanbul in Turkey and Yerevan in Armenia, both destinations that allow Russians to enter without a visa, were sold out on Wednesday. Flights from Moscow to Istanbul via Turkish Airlines were either all booked or unavailable until Sunday as of 2.15 p.m. Moscow time. The media said that Putin's announcement made in an early morning television address raised fears that some men of fighting age would not be allowed to leave the country. The Kremlin asked people to be patient as the law is clarified. Google Flights data shows typical one-way fares to Turkey shot up almost 70,000 rubles, compared with a little over 22,000 rubles a week ago. The cheapest flights to Dubai cost more than 300,000 rubles, or $5,000, about five times the average monthly wage. The U.S. Federal Reserve delivered its third straight interest rate increase of three-quarters of a percentage point on Wednesday and signaled a high likelihood of at least one more move of that size this year, with the U.S. Central Bank's chief vowing to contain inflation. The Fed raised its target interest rate to a range of 3% to 3.25%, the highest level since 2008. And new projections show the policy rate rising to between 4.25% to 4.5% by the end of this year, before topping out at 4.5% to 4.75% in 2023. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. The U.S. Fed's projections showed the economy slowing in 2022, with year-end growth of 0.2 percent, rising to 1.2 percent in 2023. The unemployment rate, currently at 3.7 percent, is projected to rise to 3.8 percent this year and to 4.4 percent in 2023. Inflation by the Fed's preferred measure has been running at more than three times the central bank's 2 percent target. The Fed's preferred measure of inflation is seen slowly returning to that target in 2025. Meanwhile, the dollar hit a fresh two-decade high against a basket of currencies. U.S. and Canadian military officials said that a U.S. Navy warship and a Canadian frigate carried out a routine transit through the Taiwan Strait on Tuesday. In a statement, the U.S. Navy said it's our Lake Burke class guided missile destroyer Higgins and the Royal Canadian Navy's Halifax-class frigate Vancouver conducted the transit through a corridor in the strait that is beyond the territorial sea of any coastal state. Taiwan's defense ministry said the ship sailed north through the waterway and the situation was as normal. Reuters reported that the operation was the second transit through the strait in a month by a U.S. Navy ship and the second joint transit by the United States and Canada in less than a year, the last one being in October 2021. Canada's Defense Minister Anita Anand said that her country, as a Pacific nation, was deeply committed to upholding global stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. She said, today's routine Taiwan Strait Transit demonstrates our commitment to a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. In his first address to the United Nations General Assembly on Tuesday, September 20th, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Russian President Vladimir Putin will only give up his imperial ambitions that risk destroying Ukraine and Russia if he recognizes he cannot win the war. This is why we will not accept any peace dictated by Russia, and this is why Ukraine must be able to fend off Russia's attack. He called on the UN to defend this from those who would prefer a world where the strong rule the weak. 
die uns so eng vernetzt haben wie noch nie. Scholz said that the return of imperialism with Putin's war on Ukraine was not just a disaster for Europe, but for the global rules-based peace order. Scholz also announced that Berlin would host a conference on the reconstruction of Ukraine on October 25th. He said that Germany would help the Kyiv government with the enormous cost of rebuilding the country. He said, as a German and a European, we must manage together to ensure the multipolar world of the 21st century remains a multilateral world. Flemish Roman Catholic bishops on Tuesday issue a document effectively allowing the blessing of same-sex unions, in direct defiance of a ruling against such practices by the Venegon's doctrinal office. The media reported the Flemish bishops belong to Belgium's majority ethnic group. They are led by the president of the Belgian Bishops' Conference. The Flemish bishops' text said that homosexual couples who choose to live in lasting and faithful union with a partner deserve appreciation and support. Reuters reported that the document published on the website of the Bishops' Conference of Belgium suggested a ritual that included a prayer and a benediction for stable same-sex unions. It said the church wanted to be pastorally close to homosexual persons and be a welcoming church that excludes no one. The Belgian bishops wrote, this relationship, although not a church marriage, can also be a source of peace and shared happiness for those involved. The Google-owned streaming service YouTube announced Tuesday that it would introduce advertising on its video feature shorts and give video creators 45% of the revenue. That compares with TikTok's $1 billion fund for paying creators. In April, YouTube created a $100 million fund to entice creators to make the bite-sized videos and its bid to hand on to talent. The new revenue sharing plan is meant to be a bigger and more sustainable lure than the fund and something TikTok has yet to match. The media reported after TikTok has burgeoned to 1 billion monthly users, YouTube responded in late 2020 with shorts minute-long videos that have attracted more than 1.5 billion monthly viewers this year. The media said that Google generated $14.2 billion in YouTube ad sales during the first half of this year, up 9% from the same period in 2021. But the most recent quarterly ad sales reflected the slowest growth since disclosure of that data began three years ago. Though global economic factors are at play, Financial analysts have said TikTok also is a factor. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board is recommending that all new vehicles in the U.S. be equipped with blood alcohol monitoring systems that can stop an intoxicated person from driving. The recommendation, if enacted by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, could reduce the number of alcohol-related crashes. The safety board said this week that nearly 43,000 people were killed last year in alcohol-related crashes the greatest number in 16 years, as Americans return to roads after pandemic stay-at-home orders. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board Chairman, Jennifer Holmde, said she has been pushing the Highway Traffic Safety Administration to explore alcohol monitoring technology since 2012. Under last year's bipartisan infrastructure law, Congress required NHSTA to make automakers install alcohol monitoring systems within three years. The recommendation proposed by the Safety Board also calls for systems to monitor a driver's behavior, making sure they're alert. According to a media report, 86% of the 46 surveyed companies out of 70 in a trial project that include banks, retailers, healthcare, hospitality, and more, said they would consider keeping the four-day work week policy beyond the trial period, and 88% of employers said the program is working well. Nearly half said productivity has maintained around the same level, while 34% said it improved slightly, and 15% reported it improved significantly, while 29 said the transition from five to four working days has been extremely smooth. 
the pilot is being organized by nonprofits four day week global and four day week UK campaign alongside Autonomy UK and researchers at Cambridge University, Oxford University, and Boston College. Kyle Lewis, co director of Autonomy, said increasing productivity, reducing sickness, and improving worker well being is just a small sample of the many well established benefits of switching to a four day week. Firms and governments worldwide are experimenting with the idea of scaling back workers' hours while keeping the same pay. Funding news will help sharpen your English skills while keeping you informed on current international events. Tune into other Funday programs to learn more about the world's most important topics in English. Click the link below now to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.